Hello, my name is Steph Kibanis from Delos, and I will spend the next few minutes introducing you to the concept of the flat path breakpoint unit in the Cortex M3 and M4 processors. So, what is a FPB unit? This is a new feature found in the Cortex M3 and M4 processors, and it provides both uh, logic for uh, implementing hardware breakpoints as well as for code patching. In essence, this unit is able to intercept an instruction being sent or being accessed from the iCode memory region and reroute it towards another instruction that may be placed in the system memory region, hence allowing you to provide a patch for instruction as well as data. So the sophistication of the flash patch breakpoint unit is not really required if you only intend to use it uh, for creating breakpoints. Its real benefit is when you use the flash patch breakpoint unit as a way of providing um, software patches uh, in your code. And the idea is commonly the user code will run um, from within the ROM and if there was faulty instruction in that uh, part of the of the memory then using a flash patch breakpoint unit you could prevent the execution of the faulty instruction and redirect to another part of the memory where you'd have the fixed version of the code somewhere in the ram or maybe in a flash so conceptually the flash patch breakpoint unit monitors instruction fetches and literal data loads that are occurring within the code region of the Cortex M3 memory map, which is set uh, in uh, in the default uh, memory map. And using the comparators that would normally be used for implementing breakpoints, the flash path breakpoint unit is able to halt the execution of an instruction or the return of a specific data by remapping that instruction or that data address to a different address located in the system memory, okay, which again is located uh, in the default memory map of the Cortex M3. So to get a better understanding of how the FBB works, we'll have a look at this simple uh, sequence of operations. And we start with an example where the core delivers uh, an instruction address in order to retrieve an instruction from the code memory and this address is not part of the addresses that the FPB is currently monitoring. As a result, the data for this address, in other words the, the actual instruction, is being delivered to the ARM core immediately and without any modification. In this second instance, the ARM core generates an instruction address which is part of the addresses that are currently monitored by the flash patch breakpoint unit. As a result, the access to the original address is being dropped and the return is ignored. And in the meantime, the flash patch breakpoint unit redirects or remaps the address that was originally intended for the code region to the system region, where we will find the existing remap instruction or data. Eventually, this data or instruction is returned to the core. We can now look at, at some of the registered details. So in order to configure the FPB, we'll have to access some memory map registers. And some of the most important registers are the FP comp registers. The FP comp registers are used as address comparators. The vast majority of them are used to hold instruction addresses but we also have some of them used to hold addresses for literals. In addition to this, the FPB relies on what's called the remap table. A remap table is a table of uh, instructions or literals that will be um, used for replace as replacements. And this table is held in typically RAM, but it could also be um, in, in the flash. In any case, this table will be located in a region memory which is outside of the code region of your Cortex M3. The address or the base address of that remap table is held in another memory map register called the FP remap register. And lastly, in a way to 
enable the FPB unit, we have a control register called the FPB control register. Now that we have a better understanding of the major players in the FPB, we can um, have a look at this conceptual diagram that illustrates how um, the different registers are being used um, to perform our remapping. So we have in the FPB a set of comparators, okay, and um, you might have spotted that we have more uh, instruction comparators than we have literal comparators. In addition to that, we also have a control register and the FP remap address that holds the base address for the remap block inside the SRAM. So whenever one of the address registers has a match, we will use the index of that register to offset our base address and to retrieve the relevant instruction or the relevant literal. To gain a better perspective on how this could work, we'll take a practical example. In this example, we will assume that as part of the reset handler, we will have a section that is used to initialize the remap table. So in our memory map, we'll find within the code region, the, the ROM part that contains our original firmware. And then above it, we'll find maybe a part of the memory that is used by a flash and that flash contains patch code okay within this patch code we'll have um, a table and that table will contain pairs of information pair of data the first element of that pair would be the bad function address or the bad instruction address in more general term and the second part of the pair will contain the fixed function address or the fixed instruction address somewhere else in our memory. The reset handler would have to look at the existence of pairs within that patch table and if it finds anything the handler would have to then construct a remap table with information regarding the fixed function address as well as configure the different comparators inside our flash patch breakpoint unit to hold the addresses of the bad functions or the bad instructions. We can now put together some trivial code that will provide the initialization of our flash patch table and our comparators. In this example we have a little for loop that iterates a number of times and each time uh, we compare the um, entry in a, page, in a patch table with the value FFFFFFF which marks the end of entries within that uh, patch table. So assuming that we have found some entries in there, we'll then access the different elements of the pairs and use the first one to set one of the comparators and the second one to set a value inside the remap table. Finally, we also initialize or enable this specific comparator. As we end this session, some last thoughts on the FPB. So overall, as we've seen, it's a rather simple and elegant solution to fixing some potentially costly errors. Keeping in mind that there are different levels of hardware support depending on the implementation of your Cortex-M3. In addition, as we saw in the introduction, the breakpoints and the flash patch share the same logic. In other words, if you intend on using patching, you will have a lesser amount of hardware breakpoint available when debugging your code. So that does it for our presentation on the Flash Patch Breakpoint Unit. Dulos is a training company. Uh, we've been operating for over 20 years now and we offer trainings in the area of hardware design, um, the usual hardware description languages, VHDL Verilog, System Verilog, as well as FPG related topics such as Actel, Altera, and Xilinx FPGA courses. We also work in the area of embedded systems and ARM processors. So we touch on C and C++, uh, UML, RTOS and Linux training. We also have a wide range of ARM Cortex-A, Cortex-R and Cortex-M trainings, both in software and system on chip. And finally, we also cover ESL and verification topics such as System C, System C verification, transaction level modeling, System Verilog, 
OVM, VMM, and UVM, as well as scripting languages like Tickle and Perl. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Um, if you want to know more about what we do or um, different tutorials that we offer on our website, the different courses that we have, please don't hesitate to come and visit us at um, www.dulos.com. Thank you.